Hello, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let's see. This is part six of The Great Falling Away. All right, let's take a look at Genesis 7, the flood of Noah. All right, let's start in verse 13. Genesis 7 and verse 13. In the selfsame day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah and Noah's wife, and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. They and every beast after his kind and all the cattle after their kind and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind and every fowl after his kind, every bird of every sort. And they went into Noah, and they went unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. Did you know that the Lord shut him in? Noah didn't close that door. It says the Lord shut him in. You know, when, when God closes the door, nobody is going to open it. Period. That's just the way it is. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth. And the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. Uh, and the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went up upon the face of the waters, and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Uh, you know, there's people who tell you that the flood was local, only in the area that where Noah lived. But, you know, it says here, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. How can people come up with this local flood stuff? I mean, you know, I don't know. All right, so, case in point. When God closes the door, that's it. All right, let's go to Genesis chapter 18. The story of the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Genesis 18, verse 16. Chapter 18, verse 16. And the men rose up from thence. Now, that's the thing about the Bible. Sometimes you'll read that they're men, but then you find out that they're angels. And the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom, and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I know that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which is come unto me, and if not, I will know. And the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure, there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous from with the wicked. 
and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And the Lord said, If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. And Abraham answered and said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which am but dust and ashes. Peradventure, there shall lack five of the fifty righteous. Wilt thou dis destroy all the city for lack of five? And he said, If I find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. And he spake unto him yet again and said, Peradventure, there shall be forty found there. And he said, I will not do it for forty's sake. Now, Abraham's pushing the envelope, right? And he said unto him, O oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Peradventure, there shall be thirty be found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find thirty there. And he said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, peradventure that there shall be twenty found there. And he says, I will not destroy it for twenty's sake. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. In other words, this is the last time. Peradventure ten be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. Let me tell you something, people. When there's not ten righteous people in a city like Los Angeles or New York City, look out. And there's going to come a day when the wicked are going to drive all the righteous out of the cities because they're going to try to kill them. A lot of people don't know it, but um, but that's what happened in Pompeii. Pompeii took a pig, crucified it, marched it around the city saying that that was Jesus. And they proceeded to kill the Christians, take their homes and their businesses. And only a few Christians escaped with their lives. And about two weeks later, Mount Vesuvius blew up, perhaps you know the story, and covered the city in volcanic, hot volcanic ash and destroyed the city. Pretty much like what happened to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. So the Christians had a two-week head start to get out of Dodge. So... And that's probably what is going to happen in the near future. Christians are going to be persecuted. And if they stay in the city, they'll be captured and killed. So what are they going to do? They're going to have to leave. Verse 33, And the Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham. And Abraham returned unto his place. Now, I hope you know the rest of the story. The angels grabbed Lot and his wife and the two daughters and like, basically had to drag them out of the city to save them from being destroyed. You know, because, you know, <laughs> that's all there was. There wasn't ten righteous in the whole city. That's sad. Really sad. Now let's read about Moses in Exodus chapter 32 and verse 1. A little background. Moses is up on the mount uh, with the Lord. And uh, if memory serves me correctly, he's getting the Ten Commandments. But it, took, it was taking a long time. I suppose the Lord was uh, giving him some instructions. So, with that out of the way, the background, let's read verse 1, Exodus 32 and verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron. Now remember, Moses and Aaron were of the tribe of Levi. Levi was the tribe of the priests. 
Judah was the tribe of the kings. They were the civil rulers. Um, all right, so the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, plural, which shall go before us, for as, as, uh, for, as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. What? The, the sons are wearing earrings? Really? And, and seems like, uh, it's like uh, Solomon said, nothing new under the sun, right? Verse 4, And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf. A cow, people. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Really? Your golden earrings uh, brought you out of the land of Egypt? Really? And uh, I don't know if any of you remember, but there was a group named Golden Earring. Radar Love. I remember that because I was rocking to that when I was in the army. Ugh. So, verse 4. And these be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early in the morrow and offered burnt offerings and offered, um, I'm sorry, and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down for thy people, which thou, for thy people. <laughs> He's telling Moses, for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. Uh yeah, that was like, uh, you know, a husband and a wife, and the husband comes home, and the, and the wife goes, do you know what your kid did today? They did something really, really bad. Yeah, that's basically, that's how I, I, I get this, you know, your people that you brought up out of Egypt, they've, they've really messed up. Yeah. For thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Some things never change in life. What do you think? What do you say? Verse ten. Now, therefore, let me alone, that my wrath, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may, I may consume them, and I will make, make of thee a great nation. Now listen carefully. God's getting ready to wipe these people off the face of the earth. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, thy people, thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians say, I'm sorry, wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom 
thou swearest by thine own self, and saidest unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto this unto his people. Now, there's a difference between the Lord repenting as the Lord has no sin to repent of. And there's a difference between sinful man repenting. It might be the same word, but it doesn't have the same meaning. I know there's people that'll try to convince you that it does, but it doesn't. God doesn't have sin to repent of. We do. I mean, let's face it. Um, Jesus said that a man that just looks upon a woman with lust in his heart has committed adultery with her already. I think every man in the world has been guilty of that at least once. Well, maybe not the sodomites in San Francisco, but uh, any, any, uh, any, any other normal male. And, uh, you know, I'm male. I, I can't speak for the women, but, uh, you know, what can I tell you? Verse 15. And Moses turned and went down from the mount. And the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. The Ten Commandments, people. The tablets were written on both their sides. On the one side and on the other were they written. And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God graven upon the tables. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people, as they shouted, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. There is a noise of war in the camp. There is. The war of Satan against the Lord, basically. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is, is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. And it came to pass as soon as he came nigh unto the camp that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hands and brake them beneath the mount. Remember something. Moses broke all Ten Commandments here. Nobody broke the Ten Commandments like Moses did. I mean, Moses was angry. And he took the calf which he had made and burnt it in the fire and ground it to powder and strawed it upon the water and made the children of Israel drink of it. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them. And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. For they said unto me, Make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me. Then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. Yeah, it's their fault. They they gave me this stuff, and I put it in the fire, and, and miraculously, this calf came out of the fire. Oh, boy. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked under their shame among their enemies. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor, and the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. 
they killed 3,000 wicked men, people. For Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, Ye have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up unto the Lord. Peradventure, I shall make an atonement for your sin. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, O oh, this people have sinned a great sin, and have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written. What book is this? The book of life, people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Therefore now go, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, my angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf which Aaron made. Let's take a look at uh, Ezekiel chapter 22. I think this is uh, reminds me of America and Europe. Verse 1. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Now thou son of man, wilt thou judge? Wilt thou judge the bloody city? Now they're talking about Jerusalem here. Yea, thou shalt show all her abominations. Then say thou, Thus saith the Lord God, The city sheddeth blood in the midst of it, that her time may come, and maketh idols against herself, to defile herself. Thou art become guilty in thy blood that thou hast shed, and hast defiled thyself in thine idols which thou hast made, and thou hast caused thy days to draw near, and art come even unto thy years. Therefore have I made thee a reproach unto the heathen, and a mocking to all countries. You know what, people? The United States is bankrupt. We've been bankrupt for a long time, but now the chickens are coming home to roost uh, there was a time when the United States was probably the richest country in the world. Now we're the largest debtor country in the world. And all this has happened since 1948, since we blessed the creation of the United Nations and the or creations of the is ray lie state over in the Middle East. Yeah. God has really blessed us with that. Therefore have I made thee a reproach unto the heathen and a mocking to all countries. Those that be near and those that be far from thee shall mock thee, which art infamous and much vexed. Behold, the princes of Israel, every one were in thee to their power to shed blood. In thee have they shed light by father and mother. In the midst of thee have they dealt by oppression with the stranger. In thee have they vexed the fatherless and the widow. Thou hast despised my mine holy things and hast profaned my Sabbaths. Yep, America and Europe hate the things that God loves and love the, loves the things that God hates. Verse 9. In thee are men that carry tails to shed blood, and in thee they eat upon the mountains. In the midst of thee they commit lewdness. In thee have they discovered their father's nakedness. Now that's a saying that means that they've slept with their father's wives. Not necessarily their mothers, could be stepmothers. In thee have they humbled her that was set apart for pollution. And one hath committed abomination with his neighbor's wife, and another hath lewdly 
defiled his daughter-in-law, and another in thee hath humbled his sister, his father's daughter. A lot of incense, incest going on, especially among the leaders of the country and your so-called business leaders. 13. Behold, therefore I have smitten mine hand at thy dishonest gain which thou hast made, and at thy blood which hast been in the midst of thee. Can thy heart endure, or can thine hands be strong? In the days that I shall deal with thee, I, the Lord, have spoken it, and will do it. And I will scatter thee among the heathen, and disperse thee in the countries, and will consume thy filthiness out of thee. And thou shalt take thine inheritance in thy, thyself in the sight of the heathen, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, verse 18, Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. Now what's dross? Well, if you were a metallurgist, you would take uh, metal ore from the rocks and you would put it in a container like a, a bucket and you would heat it up real hot. And for example, gold is, and lead are very heavy. So it would be on the bottom of the bucket whereas on the top would be the dross, the impurities. And you would scrape off the top, the impurities off the top, and then the stuff on the bottom is pure, you know, lead or gold or whatever, the heavy stuff. Well, that's what dross is. Son of man, the house of Israel is to me become dross. All they are brass and tin and iron and lead. Now, those are what they call base metals. They're not worth much. In the midst of the furnace, they are even the dross of silver. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye are all become dross, behold, therefore I will gather you into the midst of Jerusalem, as they gather silver and brass and iron and lead and tin into the midst of the furnace, to blow the fire upon it, to melt it, so will I gather you in mine anger. So will I gather you in mine anger and in my fury, and I will leave you there and melt you. Doesn't the Bible say that in the, uh, the end times that the earth would melt with fervent heat? It would pass, pass away in flames, in fire? Oh, yeah. Well... I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but yeah. The world's going to be destroyed by fire. Yea, I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath, and ye shall be melted in the midst thereof. As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, so shall ye be melted in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I am the Lord, hath poured out my fury upon you. Verse 23. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto her, Thou art the land that is not cleansed, nor reigned upon in the day of indignation. What is indignation? Extreme hatred. Nor reigned upon in the day of indignation. There is a conspiracy. Ooh! A conspiracy. Ah, we were, aren't we always told that uh, conspiracy theorists are bad? But the Bible says there there is a conspiracy. There is a conspiracy of her prophets. In the midst thereof, like a roaring lion ravening the prey, they have devoured souls. Like a roaring roaring lion ravening the prey, they have devoured souls. They have taken the treasure and precious things. They have made her many widows in the midst thereof. Her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy 
and the profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean, and have hid their eyes from my Sabbath, and I am profaned among them. Her princes in the midst thereof are like wolves, ravening the prey to to shed blood, to shed blood and to destroy souls, to get dishonest gain. And her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar. You know what happens when you build a wall with untempered mortar? Just a little breeze comes and it falls over. Because the untempered mortar never sets. I mean, it's it's, it's basically like mud, but it never gets hard. And her, prof, and her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar, seeking, I'm sorry, seeing vanity and divining lies unto them, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, when the Lord hath not spoken. Oof. Boy, this is, this is, this is America today and Europe. The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and needy. Yea, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. Listen carefully. Verse 30. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. Remember the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel because of the golden calf with Aaron? And Moses stood, and and he stood in the gap. And he made intercession for Israel. And the Lord repented and said he wouldn't destroy them. But this time it says, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Therefore have I poured out mine indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. Now, if you ask me, America and Europe are basically where Israel was, well, Judah, in the days of Jeremiah, as recorded in, in chapter 7 and verse 1. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, all ye of Judah, that enter in at these gates to worship the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Amend your ways. In other words, straighten up and fly right. Amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. For if ye thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if ye thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if ye if oppress not the stranger, the fatherless and the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt. Then will I cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Behold, ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom ye know not? And come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations? You know, this is just like today. People live like the devil Monday through Saturday. And then for an hour or two, they go to church and act like they're all holy and wonderful and then they go home and the rest of sunday and and from monday to saturday they act like the devil 
And then they think because they throw a couple bucks in the collection plate at the church on Sunday that uh, they're okay. Sounds just like this. Will ye steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, the false god? And walk after other gods whom ye know not, and come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations? In this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. But go ye now unto my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. And now because ye have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, Rise up early in speaking, but ye heard not, and I called you, but ye answered not. Therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto the place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. And I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Ephraim was the major tribe of northern Israel, Samaria, you know, Jeremiah 3, 8, where God divorced Israel. Oh, yeah. Listen carefully. Verse 16. Jeremiah is told the following. Therefore, pray not. Therefore, pray not thou for this people. Don't pray for this people. That's the Bob translation. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry, nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. In other words, don't cry for these people, don't pray for them, don't try to make intercession, because I'm not going to hear it. Remember, God shut the door of the ark. Oh, yeah. When, God, when it comes time for wrath and judgment and fire and flames, it's over. God told Jeremiah, don't pray for this people. This is the kind of stuff you don't ever hear in church. I mean, uh, I'm sorry that, you know, I teach doom and gloom a lot of times, but this is where we are in, in this time of history. I mean, when I was young, America was, you know, I've said it many times, like Leave it to Beaver and and uh, the Andy Griffin Show, you know, Sheriff Andy Taylor and Mayberry RFD. That's what America was like. Now you have sodomites getting married, if you can call it that, and abortion's legal, uh, prayer's illegal in public schools. I mean, it's getting to the point where you can't even hardly talk about things of the Bible on the Internet. I had four videos deleted from YouTube in one day. Four. Four videos deleted in one day. I think two or three of them were on the Chosenites, and then the other one was on uh, immigration flooding the land with heathen aliens as a curse from God to give you any kind of idea what's, you know, going on. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them neither make intercession to me for i will not hear thee seest thou not what they do in the streets uh, i'm sorry in the cities of judah and in the streets of jerusalem the children gather wood and the fathers kindle a fire and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and make cakes to the queen of heaven now the queen of heaven has a number of different names. Um, the Vatican likes to turn Mary into the Queen of Heaven. The uh, witches make Lilith 
the queen of heaven. And then the Hebrew roots people like to make the she kina into the Holy Spirit, the wife of God, into the queen of heaven. Maybe they don't make cakes to her, but uh, they honor her just the same. The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man and upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Put your burnt offerings under your sacrifices and eat flesh. For I spake not unto your fathers, nor commanded them in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt concerning burnt offerings offerings or sacrifices but this thing commanded i them saying obey my voice and i will be your god and ye shall be my people and walk ye in all the ways that i have commanded you that it may be well unto you but they hearken not nope they didn't listen nor incline their ear but walked in the counsels and in the imagination of their evil heart and went backward and not forward. Since that day that your fathers came forth out of the land of Egypt unto this day, I have even sent unto you all my servants, the prophets, daily rising up early and sending them. Yet they hearkened not unto me, nor inclined their ear, but hardened their neck and did worse than their fathers. Therefore thou shalt speak all these words unto them, and they will not hearken to thee. Thou shalt also call unto them, but they will not answer thee. But thou shalt say unto them, This is the nation that obeyeth not the voice of the Lord their God, nor receiveth correction. Truth is perished, and is cut off from their mouth. Cut off thine hair, O Jerusalem, and cast it away, and take a Lamentation on high places, for the Lord hath rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. For the children of Judah have done evil in my sight, saith the Lord. They have set their abominations in the house, which is called by my name, to pollute it. And they have built the high places of Tophet, which is in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to burn their sons to burn their sons and their daughters in the fire, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my heart. Can you imagine that? They burned their own children as sacrifices to the devil. I don't think abortion's much different, people. Verse 32. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be called Topheth, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. For they shall bury in Topheth till there be no place. And the carcasses of the people shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth. And none shall fray them away. In other words, when the dead bodies are laying there and the vultures come down to eat them, there ain't going to be nobody left alive to uh, shoo the uh, vultures away. And I'm going to read a companion verse in Revelation in a minute. Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the, the voice of mirth and the voice of the gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate. All right, let's read Jeremiah 32 and 33 and 34 again. I think this is talking about this was partially fulfilled in the days of Jeremiah, but I think it ties in also onto Revelation chapter 19. So let's read it one more time. Verse 32. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be called Topheth, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter, 
for they shall bury in Topheth till there be no place. In other words, there's going to be so many dead bodies laying around. There ain't going to be nowhere to bury them anymore. And the carcasses of this people shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth, and none shall fray them away. Then will I cause to cease from the cities of Judah and from the streets of Jerusalem the voice of mirth, and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride, for the land shall be desolate. All right, let's go to Revelation 19, verse 1. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up for ever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four bees fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the God, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. Why white? Hmm. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not, I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and in True, and in Righteousness. He doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies... And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, which with, with which... He deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. 
Doesn't that sound like Jeremiah 33? And the carcasses of this people shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth, and none shall fray them away. That sounds like it to me. You know, there comes a time when God's cup of indignation is full and he pours it out upon the people that refuse to honor him for, of their and 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 turn and repent of their wickedness but for those that are in Christ there is i guess you could say a light at the end of the tunnel for the wicked that light at the end of the tunnel would be like an oncoming freight train i guess you could say but uh you know, in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9, and people will tell you that this doesn't belong in the Bible because Paul wrote it. Some. But as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. James 1 and verse 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. James 2, 5. Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? 1 John 4.19 We love him because he first loved us. All right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to him and him alone. In Jesus' precious name, amen.